is at 0 0.5 and at 4.5. So now we have the two sets of points that we need to find the length of a line segment or the length of the shortest distance. To do that, now we're looking at our final step and that final step is use the line, length of a line segment equation. So we're going to erase all this Erase all this. We know that our point A is at negative 1 and 3. That's our first point. Our second point, which was the point of intersection, which we'll label right now as our point B, was, is at 0 0.5 and 4.5. So those are the two points. And now we can find the length of a line segment using the equation for length of a line segment. Al is equal to, in brackets, our second value of x subtracted by our first value of x squared, plus our second value of y subtracted by our first value of y squared. So what we have is, we have x and y, x and y. They're, but they both can't be um, labeled with the same letter. So what we do is, this is our first set of points, x1, y1, our first set of points, and this is our second points of x and y. So what we do is now we're going to substitute accordingly to our equation. So we have length is equal to our x2, which is 0 0.5. We're going to subtract it by negative 1. Okay, all squared. So we have x2 subtracted by our x1. And notice how I work with the negatives. Okay, we're going to eventually simplify this negative negative because that's considered improper math. Plus our y2, which is 4.5, subtracted by our y1, which is 3 squared. Now, what we have here is within the brackets, 0 0.5 minus negative 1, this will become positive. So what we have, and, I, and I'm going to add an extra step. This is some, a lot of you will probably jump through this step, but I'm just going to show you this step just so for those who are going to, or watching and don't know why I got to the, the step after this one. Okay, so what I'm just doing is I'm just going to simplify. I'm going to rewrite this math because this is improper. So 0 0.5, negative, negative, positive 1 squared. Plus, and of course, there's nothing really to do here. So all I did here with this next step was I simplified this set of brackets. So, length is equal to 0 0.5 plus 1, which will give me 1.5 squared. Plus 4.5 minus 3, 1.5 squared. It is purely coincidental that the two numbers are the same purely coincidental. So you're not looking for that as a pattern. Now, another thing to keep in mind, because the exponent 2 is to the outside of the brackets, you will never get a negative value. Because a negative value squared, okay, as long as you keep them in the brackets, and this is hypothetically if, if you ever did get a negative when working out uh, these problems, you will never get a negative value because remember in actuality you can never square root a negative value so the value will always be positive why because of the squared values now so next step our length is equal to 1.5 squared plus 1.5 squared which will give me 2.25 plus 2.25 so this length, and we're going to continue it over here, 2.5 plus 2.5 will give me 4.5. Now, if I leave it in my radical, or my square root sign, whatever you want to call it, if I leave my number in my radical, this is what we call the exact solution. So if your, if your teacher asks you for the exact solution, you keep it in the radical sign. Because... 
This is a, the reason this is an exact solution and not if we, we uh, actually find the square root of this value. Okay. The length here, if we actually do find the square root of 4.1, we get something like 2.1, so on and so on. So we're going to do it to the nearest tenth, 2.1. This is what we call an approximate solution. Okay? And the reason why we call, we call it an approximate solution is because, well, if we go backwards, we cannot get this 4.5. 4.5 in the square root is called an irrational number. Okay? Only rational numbers, only numbers that can square root completely, exactly, like 9, 64, 81. Values like this can be square rooted exactly. So their exact solution will be, can be square rooted. But the square root of 4.5 is the exact solution because, like I said, if we go one step further, we get 2.1. To go from the approximate back to the exact, we have to square this value. And if you square 2.1, you will not get 4.5. You'll get a number close to 4.5, but you will not be able to get 4.5 exactly. So I hope the... Um, the following video helped you try to be able to find the shortest distance from a point to a line. Keep in mind, step one, find the slope of your new line. And that slope of the shortest line, distance from this point to a line is always considered the perpendicular slope to whatever slope is the original line. So that's your step one. Step number two, write out the actual equation of the new line. Step number three, solve for the linear system. And what you're doing is you're trying to find a point of intersection. And then once you have that point of intersection, step number four is to substitute your values, your two points, into your equation of a line segment. And keep in mind that by keeping your answer in the radical sign, in the square root sign, is considered an exact solution. Once you square root that value, that will be equal to something called an approximate solution. And be wary of what type of questioning your teacher does ask you for the question. Thanks for watching.